Right, I've been on a little bit of a spending spree. I've gone out and bought myself a Zygu, Shagu, however you're supposed to pronounce it, X6200. Now, there's a few videos on the American YouTubers' channels. Um, they've had them for a couple of weeks. These are brand new here in the UK. I've only just got it today. And um, the difference is I don't have any sponsors to upset, so I can uh, pretty much give you the down and dirty as it is. Um... I went out as soon as it was announced in the UK. I went out and put my deposit down and I paid the full asking price. Uh, same as anyone else. So because unboxing videos bore me to tears, I've already got the radio out and uh, done a little bit of uh, fiddling with it already. First impressions. Feels fairly solid, actually. I, I did wonder what the screen would be like, but uh, I, I guess the screen will probably last better than the icom 705 if this is uh bashed around now the the icom 705 probably not a spare uh, not a fair comparison um it's worth quite a bit more money than this so we have to remember zygu are budget radios and they have got a couple of quality or have had a couple of quality issues in the past um the first thing i'm noticing there is if i shake it slightly hold it up to the mic can you hear that rattle that's the uh, foot on the bottom there i do wonder if that might be uh, a little bit irritating in your backpack as you're walking uphill um the other side's okay uh buttons they all feel uh, they've got a nice click to them i feel like they're going to last and if i turn it on the first impression is it takes absolutely ages to boot up there we go um nice uh, volume knob and uh multi-function key on the front there rotary knobs possibly a little bit stiff but uh you don't want it too uh too loose um now the big problem i've had with these radios for the x5105 which i have up here on the shelf behind me and uh to some degree the 6100 as well the sound quality on receive was horrific um i used uh, i used my 5105 a couple of times and just just didn't get along with it so it sat up there on the shelf um 6100 i've never owned but i have got my hands on uh a couple of other people's just to look at and the audio was a little bit better so the one thing i'm really hoping they're going to have sorted out on these on the uh, 6200 is the audio so without any further ado i've got down here a coax cable it's connected into the aerial on the roof of the house on the mast it's basically a dipole a rotary dipole for uh, 20 meters we're on there's a contest on at the moment so I'm just going to find a couple of stations and see what it sounds like. Charlie Tango Duris, Golf of Sierra November. Charlie Tango Duris, Guatemala, Santiago November. Okay, so first impression then. The audio does seem a bit better, or a lot better actually. It'll be interesting to see how it copes out in the field. And uh, I will take this out on the SOTA Summit and... Uh, give it a proper run but this is just a preliminary um just try it out at home and uh, see what i think um the mic seems fairly robust as well so i think that's going to be all right going up a mountain let's uh let's get the camera in a little bit closer and have a close-up look at this starting with the front panel there's a really bright colorful and clear display which i actually really like to the right is your frequency knob to the top left is a rotary encoder for your volume, squelch and RF gain. And below that, a multifunction control for other functions. There's some shortcut buttons, your power button and several other controls. All of the buttons feel fairly robust and the side arms should protect the panel during transit. Looking at the top panel, you can see the two support legs which do fold away. There's a PTT button, so you can use this radio as a handheld, much like you could the 6100 and the 5105. Band selection to switch between bands, and your mode button to select AM, FM, CW, SSB, or data modes. To the right, there is a A or B VFO selector, 
button to control the auto tuner and a button to control the speed of your VFO and also lock the VFO so you don't accidentally change frequency. Looking at the left hand side you get a closer look at that folding support leg. There's a DC power input jack and a BNC antenna connector. Lastly we move on to the right hand panel where there are two USB-C connectors and an SD card slot. I only picked up the radio earlier today so I've not had a chance to experiment with these but from what I can figure out looking at the manual the host USB port is for connecting a keyboard or mouse the dev port is for connecting to a computer for data mode connectivity and the SD card slot is for updates there's a socket for an external speaker CW key and the accessory connector is for Zhegu's XPA125B linear amplifier. The fist microphone connects to the radio using an RJ45 connection and the fist microphone itself is well built and has a number of buttons on there to control the features and functions of the radio without having to touch the radio itself. Right, so we've had an up close look and uh, I've had a couple of hours off camera just messing about working out what all the settings are and generally uh, pottering about so I've got a rough idea what does what now I want to demonstrate the audio quality there's a couple of things I noticed which I'll show you so what I've got set up here is I'm going to be receiving on a radio with an antenna connected so I'm receiving on my flex 6600 which is down here and the aerial is a rotary dipole which is up on the mast out the, outside there um, I'm going to be transmitting on the X6200, which is down here. Uh, coax cable coming out the end here goes straight into a dummy load, which is just below the camera down here. So it's not actually going out over the air, it's just going into a dummy load. So if you're more than sort of a couple of hundred yards down the road, you're probably not going to hear it, but I'll give a cool sign anyway. And what I'll do is I'll switch the screen onto a screen capture so you can uh, see the waterfall of the of the uh, flex and also hear the audio as well. So here we go. This is on the internal mic. So I'll turn this mic here off. So uh, all you're hearing is the um, over the air audio. This is Mike Zero, Golf Quebec Charlie, testing one. Two, three, four, five using the external mic. And uh, I noticed earlier that was, uh, the audio sounded a little bit digital, a little bit digitized, especially when, uh, especially when you raise your voice a little bit and shout into the mic. It does, uh, I thought it had one or two slightly digital artifacts. So um, that's just my take on it. This is, uh, as you can see on the screen, on 20 meters. And I'm just going to switch on to the internal mic. So I've now unplugged the uh, fit mic, the hand mic, and uh, I'm using the PCC button on the side of the radio, having my thumb, and uh, just talking into the mic on the uh, on the radio, built into the radio itself, and. Uh, from my ear, I don't think there was an awful lot of difference between the two, to be fair. Um, I'm not sure how uh, weak resistant the internal mic would be. Right, so that was on 20 metres. Now, I said in the clip that I didn't think there was much difference between the internal mic and the external mic. I'm going to pull back on that a little bit. The uh, Having reviewed the footage, the internal mic is a little bit more muffled than the external mic. And uh, there is that slight digital sound to it as well which i thought was a bit odd um i think that's just because it's uh sdr now that's pretty much the same story across all of the frequency or all of the bands except uh six meters there's a little bit of an oddity on six meters which i'm going to switch back onto the uh, flex for the receive and i'll turn this mic off again and uh i'll show you what i mean Quebec Charlie uh, testing on uh, 
the Shaku X6200. Both radios are set to 50.461, and uh, to me, the Shaku is off frequency. So, yeah, I don't know if that's just my radio, or whether that's generic to all radios. Um, I know Shaku have had a few um, a few quality issues in the past so um make of that what you will but it's fine on all of the bands except six meters now i don't use six meters all that often it's not ideal but i'm not overly bothered by it so other than that it doesn't seem too badly built um next video i'll take it out into the field take it up a mountain give it a little bit of abuse and uh see how it holds up but that's uh that's my first impressions on the uh x6200 a little bit of a lukewarm review i think well uh i'm i'm kind of reserving judgment till i've got this radio out in the field <laughs> 